this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Independence Day to everybody. God has blessed us to see another month, another first Sunday of the year. We thank God for all the members of Bethel Abbey Church here in Dolomite. We thank you again. I might not have said it in a while, but we thank you for your support of the church. We thank you for your prayers and your concerns about each other. The Lord has been good to us, and we really and truly thank you. I mean, every day, pretty much, I, I, and I'm serious about this, just about every day, I'm almost in tears because of how good the Lord has been to me and how good he has been to my family and friends and other people that are all around me, showing their love toward me, showing their concern toward me. I tell the people at work sometimes, I believe I have two churches because I have my home church where I pastor he had built and people are concerned and then I have people that are concerned here at work so it is just it's just a blessing uh, to have to be around people like that that show love toward you we thank God for the leadership of the country and of the states and cities uh, we thank God for the African Methodist Episcopal Church. We're getting ready for a general conference. And we pray for the, everybody who's traveling, uh, that they would get there safely and they would have a great conference and make some real good decisions for our church, for our church. And we pray for our bishop, Bishop Harry L. C. Wright, him and him and his wife, Reverend Sherita Moon C. Wright and the uh, C. Wright family and all of our presiding elders and their spouses and pastors and their spouses and, and all other levels of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. So we just thank God for another opportunity to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. And also this is communion. Communion Sunday. We always want to make sure that we remember what the Lord has done for us. In his word he tells us as often as she do this do this in remember of him. And we thank him. We, we thank him for what he did on the cross for us because he loved us so much, so much. And I, my thing is, I say, you know what? It's like what one songwriter say, it's so good loving somebody when somebody loves you back. You know what? The Lord loved me so and I love him back because of what he had done for me. And also, a song about to say because he first. He first loved me before I loved him. He loved me first. And so therefore, you know what? We just thank him. We, we just praise his, his, praise his, his holy name. Because he's just been so good to me. And we appreciate it. So at this time, let's get ready for the word of God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our text will be coming from the book of Exodus, the 14th chapter, 15 through the 22nd verses. The book of Exodus, the 14th 
chapter, the 15th through the 22nd verses. The book of Exodus, the 14th chapter, the 15th through the 22nd verses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cry thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward, but lift up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me, I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all the, his hosts, upon all his chariots, and upon all his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have got me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went uh, before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud of darkness to them, but it gave light by night to them so that one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. Just for a few moments. A subject for this message. Reach beyond the break. Reach beyond the break. We know the story well of the children of Israel. It was said that they were in bondage for over 430 years. And I want you to think about that just for a moment. For 430 years in captivity, captivity in bondage for that length of time. And they were God's chosen people. But the Lord had heard their cry. And the Lord had already pointed out, already was getting ready, a leader for his people. Leadership is important. If you look all in all through this Bible, the Lord always has somebody to lead his people. Amen. A lot of times, a lot of times, even in churches right now today, they have churches that don't even have a pastor. Mm -hmm. It's a difference between a pastor and it's a difference between a preacher. A pastor is an overseer who's going to watch over your soul. That's going to watch over you. That's going to love you that's going to be concerned for you. You know what? Sometimes I can't sleep because I'm concerned about the congregation that I pastor. Because once you become a pastor, your heart is with every member that you have. Your love that you have is for every single member that you have. And I'm about to let me say this. Even if, if they're good or bad, your heart will go out to them. Amen. And the thing is, that's why it's, 
Uh, everybody that's called to the ministry, that does not mean that they've been called to be a pastor. And a lot of times churches are divided. And the Bible tells us, woe unto them who scatters my sheep. And the Bible also tells us that, you know what, there are some that are called to pastor. There are some that's called to exhort. There's some that's called to teach. Some, but not everybody. So that's why it is so important to let the Lord develop the leader. And then in Jeremiah 3 and 15, it says that I will give you pastors out of mine own heart that will give you wisdom and give you knowledge of this word. So that's why it's so important let the Lord develop the leader. And in this case, what God did. That little bitty baby. That little bitty baby. Whose name was Moses. Had grew up. Had matured. To get ready. To lead his people. Out of Egypt. And the thing here, and the thing here is they uh, 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 is this that God had heard their cry, and then it was time had passed by. Moses was the one chosen to lead his people out of Egypt, and he was the one to go before Pharaoh and tell him. To let my people go. There were plagues that they went through. That they made. And then finally, the last one, when, when Pharaoh had spoken death to his own son, he decided to let the people go. And then what happened? Then what happened? You know, the thing is, he, 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 let, he, let, he let him go, but he was angry and he was really upset. But one thing about it, when God gets ready to do something, there's nothing nobody else can do. They had come out of Egypt. And then the thing is, they were hungry. And I know they thought that they were going to be starving, but one thing about it, it come a time in your life that you're going to have to reach beyond the break and just hold on and keep the faith. Because the first thing people went to talking was that, you know what, you brought us out here to starve us to death. But the thing what happened was, if you just reached Beyond that break and hold on and have the faith, the Lord will take care of you. And what the Lord did, oh, I'm about to, oh, I'm about, I better, I better sit down. Somebody better hold my me. Oh, yeah. Because the thing was, was that just when you think all is lost, here comes the Lord that rained matter from heaven and fed everybody. Amen. See, sometimes you got to reach beyond the break. And hold on because it gets to a point where you know what? You get to your breaking point. See, and the thing is, after they was they was fed, and then all of a sudden, now they were fed, now they're thirsty. And then the Lord even gave them water to drink. But the thing is, is this when we get to the our breaking point. The thing what we have to do and what I'm trying to get us to see is to make sure that we hold on and keep the faith and don't let go. Because sometimes we get to the point in our own lives that you know what the pressures of life it gets to us. Sometimes that money get a little low. All right. And the thing is, is that it seems like you just paid the house note Last week and it's due next week. That is. And the thing is, 
you might get to a breaking point and then all of a sudden in the house, something breaks down. And then somebody needs something. And then the thing is that you don't, you can't even get a loan. I remember one time, my credit was so bad, I couldn't even get credit for a coat. <laughs> Just that bad. And then things are pending and children saying, Dad, we need this. And, and then Mama, we need this. And you get to the point where you can be in, but don't you break. And sometimes you got to reach beyond that breaking point. Because the thing is, it seems like that rope is breaking. And you're all ready to cash your check. And that had already ran down. But you got to reach beyond that break. And just keep on keeping the faith and holding on. And guess what? The Lord, good God Almighty, the Lord will always make a way. Bills are doing. And sometimes even in loneliness and and sometimes you get stressed out. And sometimes you start worrying about stuff. And things start going on. You know what? A lot of times people have gotten to the point where they just want to take their own lives. Because of what's going on. And then it looked like somebody, they've been giving out, they've been giving out stimulus checks. And everybody was happy. But you know what? Them stimulus checks didn't last that long. <laughs> hmm? Huh? And before and before you know, didn't I just didn't I just have it? But then it runs out. Then something else goes on. And then the thing is, is that when the problems happen, you got to reach beyond that break. Because sometime in life, that, that breaking point, it comes. Frustration happens. Hurt, pain happens. Sometimes you get so tired. You just want to quit, but you got to reach beyond the break, beyond the break. and just hold on and just keep the faith. Amen. And the Lord is there. Now, the three points right quick, and then I'll be finished. Give me about seven, eight minutes, and I'll be finished. Now, in the text, it had gotten to the point, remember what I just told you, was that they were in bondage for 430 years. They were at their breaking point. And I know they were reaching beyond the break. And it seemed like the breaking point was there and the rope was about to give out. But then here come Moses. They had the Red Sea. And here's Moses. With his, with, his, with, with, his, with his rod. And the Lord told him to go forward. Well, Lord, how? How can we go forward? And here's the Red Sea. And then the Lord told him, stretch forth your hand. You're right. Stretch forth your hand, that rod that's in your hand, stretched forth. And when they stretch forth this hand, the seas of the sea opened up and then start walking in on dry ground. So when you're going through something, what you want to do is this, keep on moving forward. Don't look back. Don't give up. Keep that faith Keep on trusting. Keep your hope. Keep your belief. Keep your everything in the Lord that he's going to work it out Amen. for you. So your first thing is, is to keep going. Keep on going. Amen. And they didn't stop. They oh. kept going forward. And the thing is, because what happened was, was Moses was confused. But God just told him, use what you got. Use. What you got? Go forward and use what you got. And that rod was not there just to, to walk with. It was power in that rod. And it opened up and they walked in on dry ground. And the last, and the last thing, 
Hold on to God's unchanging hand. The Lord never changed. Now let me show you something. The Lord had promised them that he was going to deliver them. He did not say when, but he said he was going to deliver them. And one thing we have to realize is this, is that our timetable is not his timetable. And the thing is, what we got to remember is this, that the Lord loves us and the Lord cares for us. Amen. One thing we got to remember is this, we got to learn how to keep the faith and we got to learn how to hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's why I like what that songwriter said. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on things eternal. And we know that God is determined. Eternal. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. And the Lord had hardened the Egyptians the hard and the horsemen and the chariots and they went after the children of Israel. But we have to remember this. God bless the same God that opened the Red Sea is the same God that can close, that can close it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you got to learn Instead of panic, because we will panic. We will panic. And we have to look at this, and I might, but just this is just the reality of it. The flesh part is going to panic. But sometimes we got to learn how to reach beyond the break and hold on and don't let go. Because God. Got you. And keep the faith in him. I know it's hard. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it's hard. But don't panic. I got to say it again. Don't panic. God got us. Amen. That's why it's important that you just reach beyond the break and just hold on. Hold on. And just keep the faith. Keep the faith. And guess what? The Lord got you. And, one, and, one, and once you grab that other end, guess what's going to happen? The Lord's going to pull you up. Amen. Now when you hold on, oh. you hold on tight. Hold on real tight. And I guarantee you, the Lord is going to be on the other end because he got you. He got me. He got you. He got you. So if you reach Beyond the break and hold on and trust in him, you going to be all right. May God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. I was, I, was, I was thinking about, I was trying to think about what the Lord wanted me to preach about and then reach beyond the break. It, came, it just came to me. Hmm. And then on Friday, when I was coming from work, they said, bring it on the radio station, Dr. Jack. Mm -hmm. I heard Clay Evans, where he was saying, reach, reach. Beyond, the break. beyond the break. And I said, there it is right there. Amen. The Lord gave me confirmation yeah. to know exactly what I need to talk about. Amen. Because you know what? There's somebody right now at their breaking point. Yeah. They're about to give up. They don't think it's a solution. But when you're with the Lord, always remember this. It's an answer to everything that happens. Amen. Because guess what? Jesus is the My answer favorite. for the world today. Amen. Above him, there's no other. Jesus Amen. is the way. Amen. So let's remember, church, to make sure that we reach beyond the break. And hold on and make sure that you keep the faith. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. We hope and pray that something 
has been said to help you on your Christian journey. I want you to remember something that the Lord loves you and the Lord cares for you. Whatever you do, don't give up on don't give up on life. Don't, don't, don't you never give up. There's nothing, there's nothing too hard for God. And I'm going to keep on trusting. I'm going to keep on having faith in Him. He loves us. And He proves that to us every single day, every day, every day, every day that we get up. Every day we get up. New mercies. New mercies we see. So I just thank you for what he does. I thank him in advance for what he's going to do for me. And I'm going to keep on loving him. I'm going to keep on loving him. And I tell anybody, if it ended tomorrow, the Bible say absent in the body. You're present with the Lord. So the thing is, is this, let's just keep on trusting in him. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to prepare down for our communion, our communion service. We thank the Lord that he enabled us to be here on the first Sunday in July. God, I just love him. I love him. I love, I love communion. I love communion because just like I stated earlier, it says as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of him. Remember him. I like the song. I like the songs that's connected where it said, remember, remember me, Lord. Remember, remember me. Oh, Lord, remember. Remember me. All of us want to be remembered. But let's just think about it. Let's just think about it. It, all, it almost softens your heart, almost your heart. It almost brings tears to your eyes to think about what Jesus went through on the cross for us. The only thing I can do is just throw my hand up and just say, thank you, Jesus, for what he did for me. Thank you, Jesus, for what he did for us. So at this time, let's let's. let's I know, I know we're doing it uh, remotely, but as I read and go through this, let's think about what the Lord has done for us. I know that it's 4th of July. I know people got family coming in and all that, but you still got to remember what the Lord has done for us. First things first. First things first. We put the Lord the Lord first. Our solicitation, you that do truly and earnest repent of your sins and are in love and chatted with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God meekly kneeling. Our general confession May we read it together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most reasonably have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly the wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and a heart of sorrow for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you 
in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worldly magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is very meet and right and our bounding duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, Therefore, with the angels and our angels, and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. Amen. Our prayer of humiliation. We do not presume to come to this your table. O oh, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, born in your man for and great mercies, we are not so much as worthy, worthy, so as much as to gather the crumbs under the table, under crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, who property is to always to have mercy. mercy. Grant us, Grant therefore, us. gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your Dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen, 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 and amen. amen. Our prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made them thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full and perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O oh, merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of the most blessed body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink, uh, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is broke for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. 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 The body of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, which was given for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you. 
and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. I eat this with thanksgiving Amen. in my heart. The blood of our Lord is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which was shed for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. At this time, may we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And the church said, and forever. Amen. Our prayer of thanksgiving. O oh Lord, our heavenly Father, we your humble servants desire your fatherly goodness. Most willing to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and the whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto you, humbly beseeching you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manful sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this our bounding duty and service, not when our merits but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory be unto you O Father Almighty world without end Amen, Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and keep us faultless before our maker may the grace of our Lord and the love of God the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen.